and the Cube Controller Manager is responsible for knowing the overall cluster state. Hello and welcome for joining me for day two of 100 days of Kubernetes in which I learn every day something new about Kubernetes and share it here on my YouTube channel in video format or on my blog in written format. Also, I have a weekly DevOps newsletter, so check that out if you're interested in DevOps. Now, yesterday I looked at the overall architecture of Kubernetes and just the overall aspects. Today I'm going to be diving into what the main node, also called master node, is used for. So, okay, let's assume this is our Kubernetes cluster. All of that here. And we have here our master node in the middle and here we have maybe our worker nodes or helper nodes. Those we'll be looking at tomorrow. So, and then we have here to that main master node, master node or main node, we have our cube cuddle interface. And with that, we can make calls to our API server. And the API server is basically responsible to allow interaction from the outside world with our cluster. So it's at the center of our cluster, managing any calls from outside and from within. It's also responsible for authentication, meaning who's that person that is, or like who's that thing that's making the call? Is it authenticated? Do we know who it is? authorization is that person then or that thing authorized to make that call and then as well as to administer different controllers within our cluster. So our API server is actually the only thing that interacts with the ETCD and the ETCD is a form of database, a key value store. So key value store basically means key and then we have the value. So this could be, for example, um, name Ananis. That would be a key value store. So it's responsible for keeping track of the state of the cluster and the networking and any other persistent information of our cluster. So any information that have to be appended and stored within a database and accessible over time. So anything that should be persistent, meaning not altered. Information within the ETCD can be flagged to be, to be removed, to be deleted, so as to clean up the ETCD. However, new information is only appended at the end of the ETCD. If the API server does two requests simultaneously to the ETCD, then the ETCD will decide which one came first and basically flag the second one as an error request. So each request that is done from the API server to the ETCD has specific values attached to it as to which number of the request it is. And based on that, the ETCD can then order those requests. So next we have the cube scheduler. And the cube scheduler <laughs> is basically a responsible for knowing the resources that are available in all of those nodes. So this is a node, this is a node, and this is a node, and it knows um, what are the resources available and where can it deploy parts. So if the API server requests, hey, cube scheduler, please deploy a new pod, and you can find more information either in the video tomorrow or in yesterday's videos about pods and how they work and interact with the master node, main node, um, it will then basically see, okay, this node, let's say in the second one, there are enough resources available that would be most suited to spin up a new pod. Now it will also track pods and see if a pod fails and then try to spin it up again. The pod, the nodes that are basically free that are suitable for new pods or for specific pods, they are called feasible nodes. So those are nodes where a new pod can be deployed to. Also, you could be using a custom scheduler where you deploy the pods um, depending on how you like it. So you can, for example, then um, kind of overwrite the cube scheduler in your own way, how you want it to be configured and say, okay, pods of this sort should always be deployed here in that node or should always be deployed here in that node. 
So next, as a fourth, and those are the ones that I outlined yesterday, we have the cube controller manager. You get the idea. Um, that also interacts with the API server. So all of them interact directly with the API server. And the cube controller manager is responsible for knowing the overall cluster state. So when we say, when we give the kube cuddle commands or any Kubernetes manifest, Kubernetes resources of like this is what our Kubernetes cluster or pods are supposed to look like, then the kube controller manager actually knows, okay, this is what the desired state is. This is what the user wanted or wants and knows, okay, this is how our cluster right now looks like. And then it can compare the desired state and what it's supposed to happen with the current state. And it will aim to configure the current state towards the desired state. So next we have the kubelet and the kube proxy. Those are like, Kubelet, and then the cube proxy. And they also both interact with the API server. Now the kubelet is responsible for managing the container runtime. So for example, the Docker engine that is deployed within the nodes. So each node will have its own container runtime, I think. <laughs> and based on those containers will be deployed as pods, like pods are abstractions of containers. So it's basically responsible for receiving requests on two nodes on the containers and then make sure that those requests are fulfilled. So it's basically into doing all the heavy lifting for the nodes and interacting with API calls. Those are usually in JSON or YAML format provided also for here, for the client. So you tell it basically, um, these are the kind of pods, the kind of containers that I want to run. Kubelet, please go ahead and do it for me. Now the kube proxy is responsible for managing the network connectivity of the containers, of the pods. So um, each pod, like also detailed yesterday, has its own IP address. And it requires basically the kube proxy to know through an IP table, what is the IP address of all the nodes? Where can we, or like pods, where can we send requests to? And how should we forward requests from one to the other? And that's all to keep track of in an IP table. Now, this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any comments, suggestions, anything that I should be checking out, please leave those in the comments. Also, if you would like to join me on this journey, on this challenge, or follow along, maybe check out future videos, then please subscribe and hit that bell notification button, or however it's called. I hope you have a lovely day, and to see you next time. Bye-bye.